Morning. Uh, my name is Mark Rauchen from Rockwood Composites. Um, my presentation is going to be a lot briefer than the ones you've seen so far. Um, it's very much focused on, on process. Um, the one we're going to be talking to today is using expanding cores in consolidating prepreg materials. For us, um, we are <coughs> manufacturers composite components using compression molding and bladder molding. And they, they are complemented very often using expanding cores to make hollow structures. Um, it can be used with bladder molding and compression molding. Some components can have um, expanding cores in, they can also have compression molded parts and they can have bladder molded parts. So there's no, no limitation to um, the combinations so they all, all generally fit together quite nicely. Um, let me see. First of all, um, you've, you've heard a lot this morning about prepreg. I just wanted to make sure everyone understood what, what it is, because you've been uh, seeing um, various uh, materials thrown up, dry fibers. Um, we only process prepreg materials. That is a dry fiber in the same way you'd have resin transfer molding. Um, that is then pre-impregnated with a resin system. So the same, same fiber is then sticky, tacky, it, uh, uh, attaches to the mold tool through the tack. Um, the big advantage with, with, with pre-preg, and I'm not saying there's, it's disadvantage with other materials, but the, the fiber volume resin content is tightly controlled. It can be certified material. Um, it's, it's very much a tightly controlled material prior to the molding process. Um, and, and that's the, the important thing from, from where we stand. Um, many of our products are highly engineered. They're, they're either very stiff, very strong, or they've got peculiar damping characteristics or thermal, uh, thermal properties that we need to tightly control. And material content of the molded part is incredibly important. Um, so the second uh, point on here is, is that the quality attributes of, of the molded part is very, very important. And that's why we, we solely concentrate on, on prepreg materials. Now prepreg, um, I've shown you carbon fiber but it, it can be aramids, it, it can be glass, um, it can be combinations of, of all types of fibers, all types of, of uh, fiber architecture, UDs, woven structures. Um, a prepreg uh, into a component simply needs heat and pressure. Um, so from, a, from our molding point of view, it's, it's however you get these two properties together in the mold tool to make, make the part. Uh, the heat simply allows the resin system to cure. The, the pressure consolidates the plies um, to um, clamp effectively one ply next to the other, so you can build a stack. And, and depending on how you apply it into the mold tool, depending on the strength and stiffness of the, the final part. So that was the, uh, just an overview of the materials that we, we use. Now, this, this, this talk is simply about uh, using expanding cores in consolidating prepreg materials. Um, and what we are doing is using the heat that you use to consolidate, uh, sorry, the cure the prepreg to expand the core. Um, sometimes you have to put additional heat into the core to make it expand. Sometimes you can just use the, 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 the um, curing process to expand the core. Um, the, the third point is, you see here is pressurizing core. We made of silicon rubber, aluminium, nylon. All you're looking from an engineering point of view is a material that will give you the right amount of expansion over the right temperature range um, and is compatible with the resin system you're using. Um, it's just a mechanical engineering problem. There's nothing um, fancy about it. Uh, the, the, the fourth point is that the, the, the core heats up um, and the last point is as it cools down it shrinks away from the part so it's easy to move out. 
the process. The, um, the, tool, the, 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 the first point is it's hard tooling. Um, we, we, we're pretty much an engineering company, so we, all our tooling is hard, uh, principally aluminium, uh, but very often it's steel tooling. This is um, based on just engineering practice. You know, we have CNC mills, so we can make tooling. The, the, the tooling you can see in here is situated in a, in a platen press. Um, and in this instance, you've, you've got two platens, a bottom and a top, both heated, uh, applying a clamping force to a mold tool that's situated in the middle. Um, The, the, the process we're talking about um, is, as I mentioned just earlier, uh, suitable for compression molded parts. Um, but like all engineering problems, uh, it, you've got to understand that you're making a part which might be hollow, it might be solid in out some areas, might have thick composite uh, parts in the other. So you've got to uh, design the part, design the process, uh, thinking very carefully of the part you're trying to manufacture. I've said down here the cores are generally small in section. Uh, this is not always true, but um, you've got to be careful that you, you don't have too much expansion in the core, for, the, for instance. Um, and, and the engineering that goes into calculating the, um, you know, how the core expands in relation to the, the temperature in the tool is, is very, very important. Um, and what I'm saying here, large tools often require means of restricting the thermal expansion or controlling it in other ways. The, the good aspect of this process is that multiple cores can be used so that you can uh, have intricate parts. Um, and, and in the demonstration area, we're showing parts where you're, you can take a very large core out of a small hole. Uh, or you can have multiple cores so that you can take individual parts out. Uh, and it just gives you a lot of flexibility on, on the complexity of the parts you make. Um, the, the first thing you can see is it generates very high pressure. I say over 100 psi. It really depends on the engineering that you're, the, you're, you're putting into the mold tool, how much compression you, you really need, what's the flow of the resin system. Um, the parts can be very complex, um, not necessarily all hollow. Um, and the parts we'll be showing you this afternoon are single surface and it shows you how quick and rapid the process is. Um, it can produce a very good non-tool surface. And what I'm saying is there is, is that the, the core itself can produce a surface that's very similar to the tool surface. And you'll see this in, in some pictures to come. Um, it's a very robust surface, uh, process. You've got robust uh, tooling, you've got robust <coughs> cores, and, and generally speaking, the prepregs that you're using are very robust as well. So it, there's not a lot of finesse required. There is finesse required in, in laying the, the material up in the, in the right orientation, in the right place, but the, the molding uh, process itself is, um, is very consistent um, and doesn't need a lot of engineering to control it. Um, one of the points up here is that the, the cores um, are not necessarily like a flexible um, pressure bag. You can use it as a tool surface. You can lay up on a solid core and then that core will expand. So it, it, it's a very um, use, useful um, medium to, to, because a lot of times you're laying up uh, in a, or onto a, um, a void. And in this case, you're laying up onto a hard surface. Um, one, and, and this is a, a point I've just made, is that the, um, the silicon type cores um, basically work like elastic band. You can pull them through very, very small holes in the end. Um, these are some simple parts here. Um, this is the one you'll see being demonstrated in the, the room next door. Um, It's, you know, the manufacture of a silicon core is very, very simple. 
um, you're offsetting the um, the surface. To make this surface, you just got a comp you have a mold tool. You compensate for the amount of composite material you put in it, uh, usually by by wax or you can you can um, vacuum um, mold a, um, a a flash into your mold tool to give you your offset, and that offset is is calculated um, from the expansion of the core, how much clearance you need. Um, in the unstacked um, pile of prepreg that you've got in the tool. Uh, the next phase is, is you just mix your, your two-part um, silicon material, degas it, and pour it into the mold tool, and that's it. The, the, it's a very low-cost uh, manufacturing method to create the silicon. Um, this is a series of, uh, of shots, um, and you'll, you'll see this part in the uh, demonstration room. Um, there's a number of issues here, and it's not a whole sequence, but you can see that it's, it's metal tooling. Um, sheet of prepreg material, and it, it just happens to be the same color as that, um, is, is first laid into the mold tool. There are, it's not very clear, but there's UD material in here, there's, there's, there's fabrics, there's cores. Um, the white areas here our, fo our foam cores for a compression molded um, center section. There are also extractable mandrels uh, to create rails of, of tightly, tightly toleranced holes. Um, but the, the important bit about the silicon rubber in this instance is that we're creating um, channels up through the structure either side of the compression molded part. Uh, and that's what you can see here as the, si as the blue silicon. It's, it's wrapped with a release film to, uh, to prevent um, the, the prepreg running onto the, um, uh, onto the rubber and, and making it difficult to extract them. So this is just before the mold is closed. Uh, the prepreg, the core is in the bottom here. The, the, the top layers of prepreg will be folded over as you see here. And, and that is the, the mold tool ready to be molded. Um, the, the top will go on that. It will then go into a, um, into a platen press and depending on the prepreg you're using, um, it might cure in, in an hour, it might be 15 minutes, it, it might be two hours. So it, it really depends on, on the resin system and the temperature requirements um, of the components. Um, I've, I've spoken about silicon cores, um, but I, I did say earlier that they can be aluminum cores. This is a, a photograph of a, a PTFE core. Um, it's, um, this, this part is, is perhaps three quarters of a meter long. Um, it has oil heating up a, a nylon core. Um, it gives a, a very, it, well, it is a tooled surface, if you like, for the inside. Um, very nicely controlled expansion of the, of the PTFE. Um, this, this tool, in this instance, is also a compression molding tool. So you put it into a, um, into a press and it'll close the tool as well. So in this instance, having a PTFE core aids the amount of material that you can get in, the way that it's, it's laid up. Um, and then it, it, because you don't off always have a lot of space, um, you want a very tightly controlled fiber volume uh, ratio. Uh, you don't necessarily want a lot of bleed, but that's something you can control. Um, and a nylon, uh, sorry, a PTFE uh, core in this instance um, extracts red very easily, but it's not as usable um, if you want to extract it out of a tight or, or, or a, a tight hole or a curved surface. So you've, you know, there are limitations. It's not as flexible as a silicon rubber. Is really what I'm saying. But going back um, to how mold tools are made, it. It is very easy to machine. These are just purely engineering issues. So you can machine them on any CNC machine. Uh, typical applications. Um, I'm, I'm just showing you that uh, there are a number of areas. You probably all know uh, these areas. I'm not putting up lots of pictures of, of what we've done here. but. Where there are engineering problems, there are uses for, for composites. And w the process is about making 
good quality composite components. Um, and that means good fiber architecture, good control of the resin system, low voids. Um, and that is as applicable in, in missile structures, aircraft interiors, engine parts, sporting goods, medical, it really doesn't matter. It's simply an engineering problem. Um, and that's, that's where we come from, um, is, is trying to solve the, the engineering issues in the tightly controlled dimensions for optical platforms to cryogenic systems where you, ne you need to control the thermal expansion or the conductivity of, of parts. And I've just thrown up a few examples of, of areas that um, these things are used. Uh, a bit of a conclusion. Um, we, we think it's a, it's a good process for good quality parts, and that's in the end what we're here to, to manufacture. It's a low capital investment process. The, the presses are very cheap. It's just heated platen presses. In the demonstration area, we have a, a, a tabletop press. It's designed just for doing expanding core work like this. Um, and it's only small because it's designed for small parts. Um, these are relatively cheap uh, bits of capital equipment. Um, the tooling is manufactured with aluminium in conventional uh, engineering uh, methods. Um, and as I've shown you, the cores are, are easily made. So there's no big capital expenditure required in this process at all. Um, the process is suitable for many shapes. Um, I, I'd say it is probably very usable in complex shapes, probably more so. Um, and the parts we're showing you in the demonstration here show you how intricate you can get. You can get a, a core in that might be only one or two millimeters thick into a very tight space where you couldn't get a pressure bag, you couldn't get a vacuum bag, um, you couldn't get bleed cloth in there. Um, and that gives it a really good niche uh, capability. Um, I've said before it's a very uh, rapid um, and very stable process. Um, and therefore it's, it's very, very suitable for small to, to medium volume. The, in, in many instances, the silicon rubber will make, I don't know, say 50 parts, but it's very, very cheap to make. Uh, and you can, you can make a mold tool just to make the silicon rubber parts should you need to. Um, very often we don't do that. Um, it can be used in a variety of resin systems. Uh, I'm pointing out there phenolics, BMIs, anything that is compatible with the core material. So there's no, no real restriction. Um, just going back to the engineering theme, um, there's no difficulty in, in manufacturing tools. Um, every, I think everything you've seen so far no, there is an exam, uh, exemption, it is um, composite tooling. We, all our tooling is metal tooling. It's just easier for us. Um, we are CNC um, engineers, if you like, um, so that we take CAD models from clients. We manipulate those to compensate for the, for the cure temperature, the expansion of the tool, the contraction or expansion of the composite. Um, and therefore, we can cut tools very easily. Um, and we can make cores very easily. Uh, and lastly, um, the last point is that these tools don't necessarily have to be um, something that goes into a press. Um, very often we've made standalone tools. So this is a, this is a, a tool that will sit here, there with, with a silicon core or some other core um, with its own integral heating, its own integral cooling and an automatic control system. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and I think that is where we are. Um, so it's, it's a very niche uh, process um, from our point of view, and it fits very nicely between compression molding and bladder molding. And the example I showed you, it, it just shows you that you can integrate many, many aspects. Um, so any questions? <laughs>